Bob, thanks for taking some time to be with us. Uh, you've met with Fox Lake leadership. How's the community coping with all this, especially given they were caught off guard by the release of their testimony? Well, speaking to leadership and uh, a few uh, past leaders in the community, I was really struck by the resilience and the calmness with which uh, the community is greeting this news. It's been very emotional, I think, and I think uh, what I heard is that many people have been triggered uh, by being forced to relive and retell some of these stories, and uh, that kind of um, resonated with me because I've seen family members and friends go through uh, similar situations where it's very difficult to relive traumatic experiences. But considering that that's the situation that they're in, I think the community has uh, shown a lot of composure and a lot of measure in the way they've responded to this, and uh, I think they've responded to it in, a, in an appropriate way. And they're, you know, at least the conversation with me is they're talking about paths forward and paths towards healing for their community. Some of these allegations are, are not new. Some were detailed in reports from uh, five years ago when the NDP was in power. You know, Eric Robinson was the former deputy premier and minister of hydro, grew up in northern Manitoba, said he'd heard of this as a child. Why was uh, nothing done before? Well, I think that these allegations um, were made public. They were actually on the record in CEC hearings uh, in the past. And I think that that's one of the things that ought to come to light, is how can some of these stories have been told and yet uh, action not uh, have been taken. And so, you know, what I've said to the community of Fox Lake and what I would say publicly is that, you know, I'm the leader of the Manitoba NDP today and I'm willing to, you know, participate in making sure that these questions get answered. And I think that uh, I'd also point out that I'm a community member from a community in Ontario that was Im impacted by hydro development in that province. And so on a personal level, I also have an interest in this because I've seen what can happen in terms of cultural, social, and family uh, disruption as a result of uh, development in uh, hydroelectricity. So I think it's very important that we get some answers to these uh, issues, that the people who have been harmed uh, can find healing, and importantly, that uh, the community can find a path forward, but also that Manitoba Hydro and uh, governments in Manitoba understand that it's important to create a better relationship with First Nations, with Indigenous and Northern communities going forward. Well, we're hearing only a handful of communities were actually able to participate in the sessions earlier this year that led to the testimony. Are there other communities you feel that we need to, uh, affected communities that we need to be hearing from? I do. I think that, uh, first of all, if there are any other allegations, um, such as the ones that came to light last week, I think that they should be looked at very seriously. They should be referred to the proper authorities. But I think that uh, also it's important for us to remember that um, Manitoba Hydro, the Clean Environment Commission, the Manitoba government uh, has a responsibility to continue not just listening to communities once, but to continue building a relationship over time. So that's why today we called on the Manitoba government to include Fox Lake in this steering committee that they've set up to look at this, uh, these allegations and also at this report that was released last week. Now, so far the government's only talking about having their own officials and Manitoba Hydro people at the table, but it seems to me that just having hydro and government talk to each other is the sort of approach that got us into these mm -hmm. uh, situations that created some of these problems. So the solution, the path forward, should be about ensuring that communities have representation, that Fox Lake specifically is represented because they've been at the heart of this issue this time around, and that uh, we know that those voices need to be heard uh, at the table going forward. There's also been some allegations that this continues today with projects like KIASK. Uh, how concerning is that and, and what should be done? Well, it is a big concern and I think that's why it's important to have communities at the table. So because Fox Lake has been the center of so much attention right now, I think that they definitely need to be represented in this steering committee. That's why we called for them to be included in the steering committee that government is forming. But also other uh, northern communities, hydro-affected communities, need to be included as well. We don't want to see anyone's voices uh, passed over. We know that those voices need to be at the table. 
Right now, a lot of people say we're in a time of reconciliation. Well, reconciliation is about creating respectful relationships, and we can't really create a respectful relationship if some of the partners are not at the table. So that's why it's important that Fox Lake and other communities are a part of the steering committee. Right. Well, I appreciate you taking some time to speak with us about this today. Thank you.